natural force that's dismantling the doll. Please go. Ahead. Okay. Thank you. It's right here. Um, it's no fun to do in heels. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so this is called The Graveless Doll. Thank you so much for coming. Fiona, it's such a pleasure to be with you. The last time we saw each other was uh, in Brooklyn, so this is infinitely cooler. Don't know Brooklyn. And thank you so much for watching. The Graveless Doll of Eric Nudis. The scarecrow that we found last to the Pin Oak in Friendship Park, New Jersey, was thousands of miles away from the yellow atolls of corn where you might expect to find a farmer's doll. Scarecrow country was actual country. Everybody knew that. Scarecrows belonged to country men and women. They lived in Hick states, the I states, exotic to us. Iowa, Indiana. Scarecrows made fools of the birds and smiled with lifeless humor. Their smiles were fakes, threads. This idea appealed to me. I was a quiet kid myself, branded mean. And I liked the idea of a mouth that nobody expected anything from, a mouth that was just red sewing. Scarecrows got planted into the same soil as their crops, they worked around the clock like charms to keep the hungry birds at bay. That was how it worked in TV movies, at least. Horror struck. The birds turned shrieking circles around the far below peak of the scarecrow's hat, afraid to land. They haloed him. Underneath a hundred starving crows, the TV scarecrow seemed pretty sanguine, grinning his tickled, brainwashed grin at the camera. He was a sort of pitiable character, I gathered, a jester in the corn, imitating the farmer, the real king. All day and all night, the scarecrow had to stand watch over his quilty hills of wheat and flax, of rye and barley, and three other brown grains that I could never remember. My picture of scarecrow country was ripped directly from the seven grain quilty hills muffins bag. At school, I cheated shamelessly, and I guess my imagination must have been a plagiarist to copying its homework. A scarecrow did not belong in our city of Anthem, New Jersey. Anthem had no crops, no silos, no crows. It had turquoise porta potties and neon alleys, construction pits, dogs in purses, homeless women with powerful smells and opinions, garbage dumps haunted by wraith white pigeons. It had our school, the facade of which was covered by a glorious, psychedelic, phallus mosaic, a bunch of spray painted dicks. Cops leaned against the cement walls, not straw guards. We were city boys. We lived in these truly shitbox apartments. Our familiarity with the figure of the scarecrow came exclusively from watered-down L. Frank Baum cartoons and from the corny, yet frightening, Autumn's Bounty display in the Food Lion grocery store, where every year a scarecrow got propped a little awkwardly between a pilgrim, a cornucopia, and a scrotally wrinkled turkey. The food lion scarecrow looked like a broom in a Bermuda shirt, ogling the ladies' butts as they bent to buy their diet yogurts. What we found in Friendship Park in no way resembled that doll. At first, I was sure the thing tied to the oak was dead, or alive. Real, I mean. Hey, you guys, I swallowed, look, and pointed to the pin oak where a boy our age was belted to the trunk. Somebody in blue jeans and a striped sweater that had faded to the same earthworm color as his hair. A white boy doubled over the rope. Gus got to the kid first. You retards. His voice was high with relief. It's just a doll. It's got straw inside it. It's a scarecrow, shrieked Mondo. And he kicked at a glistening bulb of what did appear to be straw beneath the doll's slumping face. A little hill. The scarecrow regarded its innards expressionlessly, its glass eyes twinkling. Mondo shrieked again. I followed the scarecrow's gaze down to its lost straw. Long strands were blowing loose, like cut hair on a barbershop floor. Chlorophyll greens and yellows. Some of the straw had a jelly black look. How long had this stuff been outside of him, I wondered. How long had it been inside of him? I scanned his sweater for a rip, a cold, eel-like feeling thrashing in my own belly. 
That same morning, while eating my papal breakfast tart, I'd seen a new shot of a foreign soldier watching blood spill from his head with an expression of extraordinary tranquility. Calm came pouring over him at pace with the blood. In the next room, I could hear my mom getting ready for work, singing an old pop song, rattling hangers. On TV,